if more were really better with bodybuilding, now listen to me here, this is a good one. If more was really better, lock on to those words. Grasp what I'm saying here. Look at the implicit logic. If more was really better, then for every hour that you train, the results would get better and better and better. So why not train all day long? <laughs> Nobody does that. It's not because of the time factor either. There are bodybuilders who would be willing to train literally all day long. I would have 20 years ago if I thought it would have gotten me somewhere. What, they, they recognize that there's a limiting factor. And again, it's not time. They have a vague sense that the body has a limited adaptive capacity or recovery ability. But they don't understand the idea of specificity. Again, man is a specific entity with specific characteristics and specific requirements. One of his specific characteristics that's relevant here, he has a strictly limited adaptive capacity or recovery ability. You don't want to use up even one scintilla more than is minimally required to compensate for the merely exhaustive effects of the workout so that you have that much left over to provide for the production of growth. Hmm. So Remember, you don't grow during the workout. Yeah, absolutely. The workout merely serves as a trigger. Now, I was talking to David Durth a couple months ago, and he said that he and Aaron Baker had been trying this thing. I had trained and, both of them. Right, and they said that they were loving it. It was. They made the best progress of their life by far. Right. David but, Durth was ecstatic when he was training. He but, was uh, stronger and bigger literally every workout, which brings up an interesting point, too. Most bodybuilders, those using what I now refer to as the blind, non-theoretical volume approach, using the idea more is better, have very diminished expectations, Bill. They have come to accept the notion that progress is something to be witnessed unpredictably in tiny dribbles every now and then, and mostly then. I know because I had the same idea myself 20 years ago prior to meeting Arthur Jones. I was training three hours a day and making almost no progress. I thought that's the way it was supposed to be. That's not true. And this is one of, one more very important thing I want to get across. One of those very crucial and important items, along with the idea of overtraining, is this notion about progress. Progress should not be witnessed unpredictably in tiny dribbles every eight months or so. You should literally see progress every single set of every single exercise, every single workout. We're hmm. not in the dark ages, people. This is supposed to be an age of enlightenment. We've had philosophy and science. What's the purpose of a scientific theory? How can you ever come to critically analyze these different training theories unless you know what the definition of a theory is, which I'll give you right now. A theory is a set of non-contradictory abstract ideas, or as philosophers like to call them, principles, which purports to be either a correct description of reality or a guideline for successful action. One of my favorite analogies here, Bill, is with NASA, the Space Administration. Why has NASA been so spectacularly successful in sending men to the moon and bringing them back safely each time? Not because they kind of, sort of know what they're doing. They understand the requirements of space travel down to the smallest detail. They understand, in other words, the theory of space travel. They implement the principles properly. And as a result, they, they've succeeded with all of their man-moon missions. Mm -hmm. I tell my clients, view each one of your workouts as a scientific mission of sorts and fully expect to succeed with each one. There is a reason why muscles grow. The cause and effect relationship between intense exercise and muscular growth was established a long time ago. This knowledge is not sacrosanct. It's not something that just belongs to Mike Metzer and Arthur Jones. It's been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Why is it so hidden, and why is it so because hard? we, in fact, are living in a dark ages. Hmm. We really are. Most people know nothing about 
logic or how to use it, how to use their critical faculties to come to understand different theories, sort out truth from falsehood. Most people are intellectually dependent 